I try to write a clean first draft. And this might be a little bit over your head if you're, you're just trying to get that first novel written. That's, that's a task, obviously. Uh, but it's something to keep in mind, nonetheless. Maybe in subsequent novels, but maybe even as you write this novel. <clears throat> and I base this on, on news, on the newspaper business. And I spent a little time with the San Francisco Chronicle writing feature stories and, and, and some sports stuff, et cetera. And, uh, I wasn't a career newspaper person, but I did spend some time. It was a good experience. And I had an editor. This was, um, this was, uh, maybe 15 years ago or so, or newspapers still had editors. So yeah, I had, I had a personal editor basically in my department. I would turn in my story. I'd put all the finishing touches on it. I work on it for hours. I thought I had it just right. I turn it in. And by email, and it would come back about 20 minutes later with all these red marks all over the place. And I get mad at the person. But when I went through them one by one, I realized each and every change or question mark that the editor wrote on there was correct. She, she was right. And the main thing I was doing that they didn't let me get away with was I was overwriting, using too many words to say something that didn't require that. And of course, the whole concept stems from newspapers having limited space in the old days when, when they were print editions. You could only print so much on a piece of paper. So you didn't, you couldn't afford extra words. You just needed to get in, get out and say what you needed to say. But in the end, that's the best way to write, I believe. That's the way Hemingway wrote. That's why he broke through as a major star, 20th century fiction and a major influencer. Um, he, he came from the newspaper business, but he kept it simple, kept his fiction very simple and it, and it reads better, it reads fresher that way. Anytime you can use less words and you, you compare the sentence with the, with the jumbled words to the sentence with the spare clean number of words, the clean was better. Um, <clears throat> but I learned a lesson. I was running an online writing, sort of a writing competition a few years ago. We had writers from around the country. We actually we had writers from, from Europe as well, from England. But um and it was a unique concept where the the people wrote a collaborative novel, but every week uh a new writer would pick up from where the where the previous writer left off. So in other words, one writer would write, you know, John from Minnesota would write chapter twelve and then Steve from uh, Memphis would be would write chapter thirteen, but he'd have to start. He'd have to you know use the hand he was dealt by all the previous writers, and most and most recently by the Minnesota guy who wrote chapter twelve. So you you know he didn't have a lot of leeway. He'd have to start at that point, no matter what direction he really wanted the novel to go in. But anyway, one one Sunday night, uh, the the writer. Didn't the writer, uh, that week's writer did not turn in his chapter. And, um, I think it was, everything was supposed to be turned in by Sunday night at nine. We published them overnight and then they were, then they were online Monday morning, et cetera. They were online for a week. And then the next Sunday night, the next writer submitted the chapter, but this writer didn't turn it in. So I got a hold of him and I said, what happened? He's, oh, geez, I forgot. I said, okay, forget that. We'll just push the whole thing back a week. And, uh, and we'll, and we'll go from there. And he said, Oh, no, 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 I, I got this. I got this. I'll get back to you in an hour. And I'm thinking, wow, he, he didn't even start on this. He forgot all about it, but he's going to get back to me. Okay. If, if he insists. So an hour, literally an hour later, maybe an hour and five minutes later, I received the chapter from the guy. It's about 2000 words, clean, tight, great story. Probably one of the best chapters actually of the whole book. And he cranked it out in an, in an hour. And I realized, how did he do this? This, this guy was a career journalist and he, it was natural for him to write under deadline pressure. You don't overthink. You, you, you keep it clean and simple and you don't go backwards. You just go forwards. And I learned from that. I learned from that. Uh, and I, I tried to apply it to my own fiction writing. I said, gee, if this guy can crank out 2000 words beautifully in an hour, with, with, you know, from a standing start, completely having forgotten about it, 
uh, I should be able to do something similar in, in my fic, in my novels here. So that, again, that got me thinking. I think it made me a better author. That, in conjunction with all the feedback I got from the uh, San Francisco Chronicle editor, who really kind of you know put me through the put me through the ringer there. But uh, now I do write a fairly clean first draft, if I if I do say so myself. At least at least you know in my opinion, I mean I, it, it it works for me. So when I write a novel, <clears throat> even these thirty day novels that I've been trying to write. I, I don't look backwards. I, I, I do each day's session. Maybe to begin the next day's session, I'll look over the previous day a little bit, edit it a little bit, also get a little momentum that way as to where the story was going. And I'll continue. Then when I finish, I'll take two days at the end. It takes takes me two days. First day to read half the book and the second day to read the second half. And this is about a 55,000 word book, maybe 55, 60,000. So a shortish novel, but still a novel. So I'll take 30,000 the first day and I will just edit it for clarity. If I repeat a word too many times, you know, obviously typos, misspellings, that, that type of thing, but no major editing. I'm not moving text around. I'm not making huge cuts. I'm not mulling anything over. I'm just reading it straight through as a reader and essentially proofreading it with it, with a, you know, a couple of changes here and there, maybe clarifications, but Nothing major. I've written 11 novels that way. I've never made any major changes in the editing. The second day, I do the same thing with part two. And then, boom, third day, hit publish. And there it is on Amazon. That's that's the beauty of Amazon. Um, <clears throat> but, again, I like to write a clean first draft. And I, and I believe I have a little edge having worked, you know, having done some work in the newspaper business under pressure. And also... I did do some sports reporting for the Chronicle under deadline pressure. Same type of thing. You cover a football game and maybe the game goes late. Maybe the halftime show goes long or something like that. And the game goes late. The game might finish 15 minutes before the deadline. You've got to call that in. You got to call in your story. And there are printers unions and, and that type of thing. So you, you can't, you can't go beyond those deadlines. Those are, those are ironclad. And so you have to, you know, figure it out fast. You can't overthink it. You have to keep it simple and clean. And I think simple and clean is a good approach to your novel as well. And um, as a sidelight, I, I recommend people, people trying to become a better writer. I think maybe possibly the single best way you can train yourself besides just sitting at the keyboard and grinding it out, but better than classes and seminars and workshops and all, reading books and all this stuff is to try to write for your local newspaper. Usually, you, they don't pay you, but you can write for free. You just suggest a story, and you can write it for them. Or you can cover some news. Covering news is, is really the best, because you really have to keep it simple, and you have to write it in descending order. There's a lead, and and then it, the, the, it, it descends in order of importance. <clears throat> but you got to get that very clear. The quotes have to be very clear, the dialogue, et cetera. But in any case, writing for your local, local newspaper Especially if you have a, kind of an old griddle, grizzled editor who's going to take some time and really slash your work with a red pen, that's the probably the single best learning experience to be a fiction writer, in my opinion, outside of just sitting down at the keyboard and grinding out your novel. Okay. <clears throat>